In this tutorial we are going to discover how to create a cloth simulation using 3GS and the physics library Canon ES. Having said that we are going to start from this mere plane geometry to this then to this and finally end with this piece of animated cloth. Before we get started though you'll need to watch my previous tutorial on the distance constraint because most of what we are going to be using is based on that video. So in that video the idea was to create a cloth like object out of a certain number of meshes that are connected to each other using the distance constraint. The problem with that is that we can't fill in the gaps between the spheres to map a texture on that group of bodies as a whole and that leads us to the idea that we are going to achieve in this tutorial which is to connect the canon particles to the vertices of a single plane mesh instead. So as you can see here we have this plane and sphere that is linked to a canon body which we are going to use later in the video to see how the cloth will react when it gets in contact with another body and this is the code behind that. Now the first thing we are going to do is comment out the code related to the animation in the creation of the sphere as we don't need it in this section. The next step we are going to do is create a set of constants. Nx and Ny are the number of horizontal and vertical particles that form the cloth. We have also the mass and the cloth size, so 1 here means that the cloth is going to be 1 by 1. This is the distance between each pair of particles. We also need an instance of the Canon particle class and an array that we are going to use in order to link the particles with the vertices. That done, now we'll create a for loop and by the way you'll see that I'll set the condition of this and the rest of the for loops to i less than an x plus 1 instead of an x only and the same thing for the nested loops with j less than ny plus 1 instead of ny. This might be a little confusing for now but it will make total sense when I explain it to you in the next section so please bear with me. Now we are going to create a subarray for each value of i which in result will get us a column of bodies each stored in one array. So basically we are going to have a matrix to store the particles in instead of an object literal. The next steps we are going to do are pretty much the same as we did in the previous video. So we are going to create a body for each particle, set its mass, shape and position, then just save it in the particles matrix and add it to the physics world. Next we are going to create the connect function to connect the particles with each other using the distance constraint. And the last step of this section is to use a couple for loops again with i less than an x plus 1 and j less than an y plus 1 to connect the particles the same way we did in the other tutorial. So as I said earlier to turn the plane into a cloth we are going to connect each of its vertices to the particles we've just created, hence we need to split it in a way that the number of its vertices matches the number of the particles. To do that we are simply going to set nx and ny as the number of width and height segments of the plane geometry. And now we got our plane split, however if we count the number of vertices in each column and row we'll get 16 vertex instead of 15 and that actually leads us to the answer to why we use nx plus 1 and ny plus 1 in the for loops. Now to connect the particles with the vertices we are going to create a couple for loops within this update particles function. Next we are going to do the following. First we are going to create this index variable and I'll get back to it in just a second. Next we are going to create a variable in which we are going to put the coordinates of the vertices that form our plane 
It's an array that each triplet of its elements represent the x, y, and z coordinates of a vertex. The position variable here will contain the position of a canon particle. The next thing we are going to do is call set XYZ from position attribute to match the position of every vertex with the position of a certain canon particle. Back to index, this variable represents the index of which triplet of coordinates we are going to update. So if i and j are both equal to 0, index will be equal to 0, thus the vertex at the position 0 will be updated. If i is equal to 0 and j is equal to 1, the vertex with an index that is equal to 16 will be updated. Now why I set ny minus j here? Well, that's because the order in which the particles are stored in the subarray of the matrix is actually set from the bottom to the top. So let's suppose we use particles i, j. In this case, the vertex with x and y that are equal to 0 will be matched with the last particle, not the first. On the other hand, if we change back the order, we are going to match the first vertex when x and y are equal to 0 to the last particle in the array, which is exactly what we want. Now we'll add this line which is crucial whenever we attempt to change the coordinates of our geometry in 3GS. And we'll simply call this function within the animate function. As you can see the plane falls since all the particles have a mass that is equal to 1. To fix that, we are going to use the ternary operator to set the mass of the first row of particles to zero, hence fix them. And now we can see a stretch effect on the plane, and that means that it is no longer a rigid plane, but it turned into a soft body. To better see that, let's add velocity to the bodies which will add a wind-like effect. And now let's uncomment the sphere's code and see what we will get. As you see, the sphere pushes the cloth, but they overlap. To fix that, we need to increase the size of the sphere's body. And there we go, we are almost done. Now, to turn this from a wireframe cloth into a real sort of cover, we are simply going to add the texture to the plain material. And with that done, we came to the end of this tutorial, so make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.